Okay, so now that we have a randomly selected image, we need to manipulate this and go ahead and actually respond with it. Then we'll work on things like caching and all the other features that we want to implement. Now we're going to be using a package called intervention image, which is a really nice way to manipulate things either using the GD library or the Imagic library. We're going to be using the GD library, but it's pretty straightforward and we're not going to be diving too much into this. All we really need to do is reduce the size, make it grayscale, and we're pretty much done. Now there is a little bit of work we're going to do around this because we're going to create a service provider for this and uh, we'll look at how this works. So let's go ahead and get this installed. We'll create a Silex service provider for this and then we'll look at how we use it within our route really nicely and then we can reuse it elsewhere if we need to. So first thing is, let's go ahead and actually install this. So we're going to use Composer again to require this in. And this is uh, under intervention and then slash image. So we'll wait for this to finish as always, and we'll get this included. Okay, so now we want to, rather than just start using this within our root and get into a little bit of a mess, I'm going to create a providers folder over here. We'll go ahead and create our own Silex service provider, which is really useful knowledge because then any kind of service you pull into a Silex application, you can reuse. And uh, we're going to go ahead and create an image service provider. So feel free to call this whatever you like. You can make it as specific as you like. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Now with any service provider, we need to implement the pimple service provider interface. So let's go over to service provider interface and pimple comes as part of uh, Silex. So uh, we can just have a look at this interface, see what we need to do. And we need a register method in here. That's all we need. And we need to have an instance of the pimple container into this as well. So let's go ahead and pull these in. So let's first of all set the namespace for this because we are using PSR4 auto loading for this. So we have app providers and let's use pimple container because we know that we need that inside of that register method. And let's also go ahead and use pimple service provider interface. And again, I'm going to use this syntax for pulling in my namespaces because they are under the same root namespace. So let's go ahead and say provider interface and we're pretty much done. So we're going to create an image service provider class of course and we're going to implement the service provider interface and then we need that register method in there so we can just go ahead and create this like so and then into this we know that we get a container instance in and we can just call this app it's usually convention that we call this app uh, it just makes it a little bit easier when you're writing code down here uh, rather than naming this pimple Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to figure out how to actually pull in uh, intervention image. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do this. We can do this either by using a kind of facade, a static class, or we can use the intervention image image manager. And I much prefer this method. So we're going to say intervention and then image and then image manager. And we're basically just going to bind this onto the container. So to do this, we say app. We give it the name that we want. In this case, we're just going to call it image. And this is how we pull it out of the container. And then we're going to say app factory. And then inside of here, we give a closure and we just return whatever we need. And in this case, we're returning a new image manager. So this is now bound onto the container once we register this with our app and we can use this anywhere that we have our app instance available. So let's go ahead and register this. And then within our route, we can very easily use this with app image. So over in bootstrap app, we just register this as normal. So much like we did with our doctrine service provider. Uh, but of course, this is our own service provider now. So let's say app register and we create a new app providers. And of course, it's our image service provider. And of course, you can uh, import these at the top if you prefer. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. So let's go ahead and just give this a refresh. Make sure we didn't break anything. Everything looks good. So we can come over to our roots and start to use this inside of here. So we know the location of the image. We know that our images are inside of public image and we know that we get a file name through this query that we created earlier. So now really all we need to do is map this up to intervention image. We can manipulate using intervention image and then we're pretty much ready to go. So to do this, let's go ahead and create some kind of placeholder variable. We'll be again fiddling around with this later because we really need to cache these images. We don't want these to be pulled out and then manipulated every single time we make a request. We want to uh, cache these for speed. 
So we're going to say app image because remember we have our app instance in here and we're going to go ahead and use the make method. So we're now using intervention image methods in here to go ahead and pull in an image, manipulate it and then respond with it. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and pull in the current directory here. We're going to go back a directory into public. We're going to go into image and then we're going to basically using the result from that query that we used earlier, we're going to grab the file name. So we now have that image ready to start manipulating. And I'm just going to kind of pull this down onto a new line because we need to chain on a lot of methods here. So now all we need to do is fit this to a specific width and a specific height. Now we don't have access to these two placeholder values at the moment. And all we do is just add these onto here. So I'm going to say width, height and so on and so forth, depending on how many placeholders you have. Now we can say, well, we want to fit this to a width and a height that's provided in the URL. We want to make it grayscale. So all of these kind of uh, methods here are available on the intervention image documentation. So if you need to do anything else to these, feel free to refer to that documentation. Now what we need to do is create a response for this placeholder. So very simply, we say response PNG and we're done. We now literally have a PNG image. So we can't really just say, well, I want to place that inside of the response. We can do, but what we'll get is if we just fix up the path here, so you can see we've got image, but we didn't add a slash just on the end of there. We should now see the raw image data, which is not good. So what we want to do is inside of the response, send over some headers. Now we know that when we respond, we're using a PNG all the time, regardless of the source uh, type of the image. So as a third argument to our response, we can simply start to pass in some headers. So we want to tell the browser that we have a content type here of image slash PNG, like so, and that is pretty much it. So grabbing a random image from the database, looking that image up and responding with that image at the width and the height that we've requested, give it a refresh, and we see a cat. Perfect. And of course, if we refresh this, we get a random uh, selected one every single time. So that's pretty straightforward. What we can now do is start to change this around. So I can say 500. Uh, I could change this to 200 and we get the same thing. So works really well. Of course, uh, they're cut off a little bit, but I'll leave you to fiddle around with that depending on the images that you use. But that is pretty much the basis of it. That's how easy it is. Now, we can't really stop here because if we are using this as a service, if you were building a service like this, you really need these images to be f as fast as possible. And the problem with this is we're always going ahead and fitting this to a width and a height. We're always processing this as grayscale. So it's taking a little bit longer than it should do. And we can kind of see this if we open up our network tab over here and go ahead and give this a refresh. Uh, you can see that this is actually taking, if we pull this out, um, 172 milliseconds. Now that doesn't seem a long time, but ideally what we want to do is once we have at a specific width and a height, manipulated this image, cache it, and then just serve that image back to us uh, if it already exists. So with that said, what we want to do is go over it in the next part and look at caching our rendered images.